Welcome, I'm Ijoma Onyato. Tonight, Nigerian military resolves to deal with any insurrection, says Nigeria remains one indivisible entity. Shiite leadership justifies decision to refuse army chief right of way, also rejects probe committee headed by assistant commissioner of police. Federal High Court orders unconditional release of director of Radio Biafra, Nnam Dikanu and IMF Chief Christine Lagarde to stand trial in France for alleged negligence of a $438 million payment to a businessman. On business news tonight, the Naira plunges to 280 Naira against the US dollar at the parallel market. And on sports news tonight, Jose Mourinho pays the price for Chelsea's dismal form in the English Premier League becomes the latest casualty of the Roman Abramovich era. I'm Linda Akibe and from Abuja, Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Tupo Borotai says army acted within the law in the clash of the members of the sect. We begin tonight with the resolve by the Nigerian Armed Forces to keep Nigeria as a united country. The Chief of Defence Staff, General Gabriel Olunishaki, said today that the Nigerian military will continue to maintain one indivisible entity. He said this in Abuja while receiving the commander of the French forces in Senegal, Brigadier General Pascal Fahon, at the defence headquarters. And he said that no matter the attempt by any group or persons to entrench disunity in some sections of the country, the Nigerian military, quote, will fight to ensure one Nigeria and one destiny. His guest, Brigadier General Fahon, had told the gathering that the French president is willing to collaborate with countries in fighting the insurgency in the northeast. He further applauded the Nigerian military for their success in containing the activities of Boko Haram. Recently, the federal government has faced several protests from pro Biafra group in the southeast, the Islamic movement of Nigeria in Zaria, and of course, the Boko Haram insurgency, which has claimed more than 10,000 lives and displaced over 2.2 million people. Now, the governors of the 19 northern states have summoned an emergency meeting following the recent fracas between the army and members of the Islamic movement in Zaria, Kaduna State. In a statement issued by the chairman of the Northern Governors Forum and governor of Borono State, Kashim Shatima, the decision to summon the emergency meeting followed consultations among the governors over the recent happenings. Governor Shatima said the Northern Governors were worried about the situation and have resolved to wade into the matter with a view to addressing the problem. The governors, however, called on citizens and warring parties to remain calm and exercise restraint assuring that far-reaching steps would be taken to guarantee restoration of normalcy. The forum reaffirmed that governments across the 19 states would at all times take measures that will promote peace and public safety, as well as justice and fairness to all citizens in line with the Constitution. Now, the acting spokesman of the Islamic movement of Nigeria, Ibrahim Musa, has been explaining the reason behind the violence that claimed many members of the group in Zaria on Saturday, during an interview on our breakfast program, Sunrise Daily, Mr. Musa said the Islamic group members were only provoked by the unusual presence of the soldiers close to their center. He, however, insisted that his group is law-abiding as members are not allowed to carry arms. Sunrise Daily presenter Mark Weogun began by asking if the group recognizes the Nigerian nation and why they failed to make way for the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukur Buratai. I don't know what you mean by recognition, but we know it exists. You do you know respect it? Exists, it? When, do, when they say do, don't, don't pass here, do you respect them? Of course, if it is not uh, contrary to Allah's law. Huh? There are many things we, we, we do which are according to the uh, law, laid down laws of the land. We follow the, 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 the all, other, in all other aspects. Unless if the say that we should do something contrary to Allah's law is when we will disobey. But nothing of that nature. So someone would now ask, why should the ordinary issue of the passage of the chief of army staff cause any confrontation between the army and your group? Uh, we are, all, you, we are you, also surprised of this. You have the authorities, the you, authorities are supposed to answer this question. Why? Because if supposing I, I prevent you from passing, 
Does that mean you have the right to kill me? The question then will be, why did you prevent them from passing? Why would you want to prevent because, the chief of army staff from this passing? this was the first time they attack us. They attacked us on, in July, killing 34 members of, of our members. And also, we didn't prevent them passing. They came down opposite to our, our, our place. If somebody um, come to your house, what will you tell him? We'll ask him to leave to another place. Uh, okay. I just want to also ask, uh, do you understand that, you know, there are many religions in Nigeria and they also have a right to coexist? Yes. You, you do recognize that? Of course, of course, of course. Now, Amnesty International has asked, you know, that there be uh, a probe. The federal government has also set up a probe panel. We understand that the yeah, Senate that. and the House of Representatives have also set up their panels to investigate the crisis. Uh, exactly. Will you be sending a representation to the National Assembly? Yes. Are you satisfied with, with the panel that has been... Oh, do, do, do you think that the Nigerian, the Nigerian government can set up a probe that would look at it dispassionately? Are you confident that... It, the it, Nigerian government so far hasn't set up any panel. They only asked the AC in Zaria, the area police commander, to, to, to investigate. We, we reject that one in particular because an AC is a junior rank. We expect the federal government to establish a, a high-powered panel composed of eminent personalities in the country who, we, who are being respected, who we know they will do justice to the matter. But just to ask somebody of a junior rank to investigate the matter is an insult to, to, to the, whole, the whole issue. But that of the Senate and the House of Rep, if they invite us, will really come and give our, the, our own side of the story. Before you leave now, uh, have you ha are you in touch with uh, Sheikh Zakzaki? They, they promised to allow us to be in touch with him, but as I'm speaking to you now, nobody among the members of the movement or members of his first family has seen him. So we are calling on them. Since they shot him four times, it has been confirmed to us that they shot him four times, which means he is severely wounded. We are asking them to give him to give him uh, to, to give him to us so that we can give him a proper medical attention he deserves. Because whatever happened to him, they are going to be held responsible. Acting spokesman of the Islamic Movement of Nigeria, Ibrahim Musa, telling their own side of the story about what transpired in Zaria on Saturday. In the meantime, the chief missioner of the Ansaruddin Society of Nigeria, Abdul Rahman Ahmad, has called for peace between the soldiers and the Shiite Islamic group. Also speaking to Channels Television, the Islamic leader advised that lessons should be drawn from the activities of Boko Haram and the clash with soldiers during the formative stages of the insurgent group. He added that the killing of the first leader of Boko Haram may have led to the escalation of the group's activities. was extrajudicially assassinated and uh, things have never been the same. We could learn from that and we could do everything to prevent a recurrence um, of that. But we could, uh, you know, draw a few lessons um, from what has been happening to us as a country. And we should know that we're better together. We're better to stand together. We're better off peacefully. We're better off our economy, our well-being. Everything is better off. I am not saying that we could achieve this without justice. Justice is, um, uh, uh, it goes without saying, without justice there could be no peace. Now the chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Tukur Buratai, has said that the Nigerian army acted within the law in the clash with the Shiite sect members in Zaria over the weekend. The army chief, who spoke at a meeting with officials of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, said that the incident could have been avoided if the sect members heeded earlier warnings to allow for free movement. He described the action of the sect members as an infringement on national security. The events uh, that occurred, or what occurred, uh, really uh, was avoidable. Unfortunately, 
the uh, activities of uh, those elements, you know, also infring infringes on uh, national security. And it's a challenge to the authority uh, as it is. We've applied all the uh, procedures, we've observed all the procedures that should be done uh, based on our teachings, uh, based on our rules of engagement. And uh, we also have that constitutional responsibility uh, to bring situations under control, uh, to bring a uh, situation of breach of uh, uh, the law, you know, under control. In this case, uh, you must have probably uh, gotten or had, you know, what, trans what transpired. Luckily, the press was with us, and uh, they recorded everything that transpired, transpired at the initial stage. Uh, before uh, we had to find our way, before our troops had to clear the road for us to move. Uh, you did uh, demand to see the, uh, the, the leader. Uh, we did, as I said, in response to our constitutional responsibilities, we handed him over to the appropriate authorities uh, for, for, for prosecution and all other suspects that have uh, been uh, arrested. They are not with us. In part two of the break, we continue with our lead story on the clash between the soldiers and the Shiite Islamic group and we'll take you to Abuja where Linda Akigbe will be having a conversation with the retired army officer Colonel Yomi Dare on the clash between the two groups. All in a moment, the join us again.